Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Conservative Poet with me, Amanya. I am thrilled that you have joined me today. Today, we are covering the debates. Now, I did not get to watch them a couple of days ago when they um, were happening in Miami, and I didn't go to Miami to see President Trump either because Trump had a rally. He didn't show up. As we all know, he had his own thing. But unfortunately, I did not make it up um, to Miami for the Trump rally. But I do want to cover this um, debate because from what I hear, it's the talk of the town. And Vivek Ramaswamy seems to have done very, very well. Now, I've only seen maybe a clip or two in reference to what he's done. Um, but I wanted to cover it myself and see and just, oh my God, it looked like he really, really destroyed them all. So I'm very, very excited for that. And so we're not going to do a long, it's an hour in, I think, hour 38 minutes or hour 40 minutes or something like that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and, and do in clips and cover it piece by piece. And therefore, this, so I will not have a long two hour video. I'm going to have just, you know, short, I don't know if they're going to be 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, however that's going to go. And we're going to cover those. And so there's going to be multiple uh, videos in reference to this one um, debate. Again, I'm not going to do a whole long one as we go. So let us get started. First clip up is the opening clip. And I believe the firecracker starts right then. Tonight, a critical test in the race for the White House. Five Republicans battling to become their party's 2024 presidential nominee. The candidates ready to make their case on why they're prepared to be commander-in-chief amid two wars on the world stage. How they plan to tackle stubborn inflation and how they can unite a deeply divided electorate. Who is best to take on President Biden? And can any of them first be former President Trump, who's far ahead in the polls? The candidates are here. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. From NBC News, the Republican presidential debate. Live from the Adrian Arst Center in Miami, Florida. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Republican presidential debate. I'm Lester Holt, anchor of NBC Nightly News. Good evening. I'm Kristen Welker, moderator of NBC's Meet the Press. Hello, I'm Hugh Hewitt, host of Salem Radio's The Hugh Hewitt Show. We are now just 68 days from the Iowa caucuses when Republican primary voters will begin to determine their party's nominee for president. Tonight, we'll question five candidates seeking that nomination on how they're best prepared to be commander in chief. And, of course, how best to bring down prices impacting Americans across the country. We have two hours for a serious debate on the issues that matter most to Republican voters. Candidates will have one minute and 30 seconds for answers and the opportunity for a closing statement. Follow-ups will be at the discretion of all of us at the table, the moderators. Invoking a candidate's name or policy does not necessarily mean the mentioned candidate is entitled to a response. We want to caution all the candidates not to interrupt or speak over your fellow debaters. If you talk over each other, the voters can't hear you. And given the critical issues we're facing specifically on the world stage, we want everyone to hear every word you have to say. Continued interruptions may result in loss of additional questions. And to our audience, please, please hold your applause so that the candidates can be heard. With that said, let's have a good debate. All right, our first question, the opening question, is one for all of you. 
Donald Trump is the first ex-president in more than 100 years to run for the White House again. And he remains popular among Republican primary voters as his legal challenges mount. Governor DeSantis, let me begin with you on this one. Speak to Republican voters who are supporting Donald Trump. Why should you and not him be the Republican nominee to face Joe Biden a year from now? This country is in trouble. And the elites that have put us here, they don't care about you. They don't care that you're having to grapple with higher grocery prices or have higher gas prices. They don't care that your family's less secure because of the open border that's allowed drugs and even terrorists to come into this country. Well, I care. I am not going to sit idly by and let this country continue its downward spiral. We need leadership and we need it now. I'll take the hits. I'll take the arrows. I'll take the slings because ultimately it's not about me. It's about you. I will fight for you. I will make sure to lead this country's revival and I will win for you and your family. Actions speak louder than words. We don't have time for excuses and it's not something that we're gonna be able to have all these distractions. As a veteran, I will get the job done. Now, if you look where we are now, it's a lot different than where we were in 2016. And Donald Trump's a lot different guy than he was in 2016. He owes it to you to be on this stage and explain why he should get another chance. He should explain why he didn't have Mexico pay for the border wall. He should explain why he racked up so much debt. He should explain why he drained the swamp. And he said Republicans were going to get tired of winning. Well, we saw last night, I'm Republicans losing. In Florida, I showed how it's done. One year ago here, we want a historic victory, including a massive landslide right here in Miami-Dade County. That's how we have to do it. So I promise you this, as the nominee, next November, I'll Thank get the job it. done. And as president, I will your, deliver. Your time is you. up. Let me turn to Ambassador. Woo! We, I'm going to start with this. We love DeSantis as our governor. We do. DeSantis has done great things for Florida. We recognize that. We respect that. But DeSantis is not the guy. DeSantis is not the guy this time around. Now, he talked about Miami-Dade, Florida, and how he did win those seats. It's true. For, for this area, our area, DeSantis did not win Orange County. Um, in this area, Rubio didn't win it either, but he, they did, they did do a massively great job of Rubio keeping his seat in 22 and, uh, DeSantis getting back in, in 22. Now I worked the grounds. I was on the ground. I was working, uh, one campaign, but I did work also for DeSantis's team here, you know, um, that was voluntary for DeSantis's work, but the other one, um, you know, that wasn't volunteer. So we worked hard here to, to make sure DeSantis got in. But at this level, we want Trump because Trump deserves another term. Now, Trump won in 2016. He says that Trump was a different man in 2016 and, and he needs to explain about Mexico not paying for the border wall. Well, again, things happen, but guess what? Trump did a great thing with implementing the remain in Mexico policy, right? The wall didn't get finished, right? The wall was built, but it wasn't finished. And Sure, Mexico gave us 28,000 men to protect our borders. Remain in Mexico. You can call it potato, potato, tomato, tomato. He got more done on the wall, the wall the, uh, on the border than any other president. We were secure under any other president. So I understand DeSantis is saying he's going to be bringing troops at the border. 
which, you know, I would love to see because I think that's, you know, that's needed. Maybe Trump should have um, implemented that as well. Um, but kudos for DeSantis for, for that part. And, um, but Trump did a great job and we all know he did. And so I say shame on DeSantis and I get it. He's trying to, to be the leader of the free world. I get it. Um, but it's not your turn. You never should have run. I'd like to see 2028 when Vivek Ramaswamy, which I believe will be, um, you know, one of the key people in our party in, uh, 2028's election. So the same as the Democrats tell their people, sit down, it's not your turn. Somebody should have said to DeSantis, sit down, it's not your turn. Let me turn to Ambassador Haley. Why you and not the former president? Well, I think you look at the fact that we're almost $34 trillion in debt. 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 50% of American families can't afford diapers. One in six American families can't pay their utility bills. You have parents who are worried about what's being said or taught to their child in the classroom. There's no transparency. We have anti-Semitism all over our college campuses and students feel unsafe. You've got an open border where terrorists can come through and we've got wars happening all over us and there are dangers around us. You know, everybody wants to talk about President Trump. Well, I can talk about President Trump. I can tell you that I think he was the right president at the right time. I don't think he's the right president now. I think that he put us $8 trillion in debt and our kids are never going to forgive us for that. I think the fact that he used to be right on Ukraine and, and foreign issues, now he's getting weak in the knees and trying to be friendly again. I think that we've got to go back to the fact that we can't live in the past. We can't live in other headlines. We've got to start focusing on what's going to make America strong and proud. And that's what I'm focused on doing. Let's make sure we pay down our debt. I think we need an accountant in the White House. Let's make sure that we have transparency in the classroom. As a mom, I know what that means. Let's make sure we secure our borders so that our families are safe. Let's get crime down because our families want to know that they can be safe no matter where they go. And as the wife of a combat veteran, I will tell you, a military needs to know we have our back and we need to make sure that America is... Ambassador, strong. thank you very much. So, Nikki Haley, who is, by the way, benefiting off of these wars. Yes. She is getting rich and wealthy because of these wars, because of her work with defense contractors. She does not have the American's people interests at heart. She's got her own interests at heart because her role as ambassador and, you know, and, and now as whatever she is, I'm not sure what she's doing now, but again, her main thing is making sure that we stay in these wars, that we go into more wars so that she can continue to benefit off of the backs of dead Americans going to secure other people's borders going to support Ukraine and, and, and fixing their border and not fixing our border. She's all in for wars. And so putting Nikki Haley in, eh, not so good for the young, blooded Americans in this country. Let me just uh, let me just caution the audience. Let's not go down this road. We've asked you to please, you know, keep restraining yourselves and it would be helpful so we can hear the candidates because these are important issues and the voters want and need to hear them. Uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, let me turn to you. Uh, please make your case. Why would you uh, why should you be the nominee and not the former president? I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here. And I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. It was a cancer in the Republican establishment. 
Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. You think the Democrats, and we've got Christian Welker here, you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Christian, I'm going to use this time because it's actually about you and the media and the corrupt media establishment ask you the Trump Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Mr. Robert, this is how we get our country back. We need accountability because this media rigged the 2016 election. They rigged the 2020 election with a Hunter Biden laptop story. Mr. Ramos, and they're going to rig this election. Your time is up. Accountability. Let me turn That's to Governor, Governor Christie. Why are you? Whoa, 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 whoa. That is a true American patriot calling it out. Okay, let's start from the top. He called out Ronna McDonald, whatever her name is, the leader of the Republican Party, the head of the Republican Party, who, by the way, was put back in. I believe it was early this year. They had elections and she was voted in. And matter of fact, Mike Lindell also ran, but he barely got a vote. They got her. They put her back in. Ever since she's been in, we've lost elections. Whether they, they've been stolen, whether we didn't um, organize better, it doesn't matter. Either way, we've lost elections. And Vivek is right. We lost the midterms in 2022. We lost um, 2020. Again, whether it was stolen or not, well, it was stolen, but you know what I'm saying. We lost. We lost um, across the country for 22 during the midterms, the red wave that didn't come, as he said. And then we lost big this time around again. We lost local seats, seats that we should have been able to cultivate and win. For example, the race right here in Orlando. Again, we were going against the, a, a, a machine, but we got no help from the Florida GOP. We got no help from uh, the Orange County GOP. We got no help from Florida GOP. We were on our own out here. And so again, policies of the Republican Party, failures of the Republican Party, and it goes to the top, and that's Rana. If she was able to, to do better, perhaps we could win more seats. They've got rules, all kinds of rules. Look at us with our rules. Can't get anywhere. Losing, 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 losing. Election after election after election. And I'm sick of losing. I'm on the ground working these, these campaigns all the time. I'm getting ready to get into another one for 2024. And I don't want to lose again. I don't want to lose again. I need the Republican Party to man up and do what they have to do. Okay, what else do we want to cover from what Vivek says? He said so much there. Oh, my God. Um, oh, God, I don't know what else. Um, but that was part of what I wanted to say. But, yeah, he was beastly. That was amazing. You know, he loves this country. Somebody, we were, I was having a conversation today, and somebody said, you know, he's like a mini Trump. And I says, yeah, what's wrong with being a mini Trump? Because guess what? If he he's younger and he's stronger and he's going to go for a longer haul, He's got a couple of, he can go in for a couple of more rounds and, and he can bend and he can learn and he can be much better than Trump. We love Trump I'm all, all day for Trump, but I'm, I'm seeing where we're going in this country. And yes, we need somebody younger. 
We love Trump, but we need somebody younger. Not this time around. I'm talking 2028 here. Trump is 2024 because they stole the 22, the, uh, they stole the 2020 elections from Trump. He was in for 2016. It was every day a battle, Russia, 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 all kinds of nonsense, all kinds of impeachments. And then the, um, the setup, the COVID, um, all of that, he needs another term. He needs another term. And 2024 is going to be it. Everybody should have been behind Trump. There shouldn't have been no primary. It should have been just Trump. That's how I feel about it. It should have been just Trump. We should have had nobody else. So, but I'm glad we do because we can, again, get rid of the trash. You know, the Chris Christie's. Get rid of the trash. The Mike Pence's. Get rid of the trash. The Nikki Haley's. Get rid of the trash. And out of this, we found a gem and Vivek Ramaswamy, a fighter, ladies and gentlemen, a fighter for America, a fighter for we the people. And I'm, for one, am excited about it. And I didn't talk about this. I didn't make a video. I was there at the Sunshine Summit uh, last weekend where um, I did get to hear Vivek in person. Again, amazing. And President Trump, of course, was there um, as well. But what I'm saying is, you know, he he is a strong candidate and the people are, are, are warming up to him. And again, 2024 is not his turn, but 2028. And if DeSantis decide if, if De, DeSantis hasn't completely demolished his career, you know, with this nonsense that he's he's doing here, if he still has a shot in 2028, you know who's going to come for him? I believe Vivek is going to be the guy in 2028. And if DeSantis want to do it, that battle is going to come. I'm just saying. Audience, Audience let's not do this. Let, let's not do this. Let's let the candidate speak. Uh, Governor Christie, why you and not former President Trump? Well, Lester, look, you said it at the beginning of the debate. We are dealing with extraordinarily important issues facing this country right now. We have our greatest ally in the Middle East under fire from a terrorist group that has committed to wiping them and every Jewish person in this world off the map. We have Ukraine with Vladimir Putin, a communist KGB dictator who wants to put the old band back together. He's starting in Ukraine and he's gonna to move to the Baltics and Poland after that. We have inflation in this country that is choking choking every American family that wants to try to rise up and give their children a better life. And tonight, we need to decide which president is going to be the one to tackle the big issues, who's going to make this country look once again, not just inward, but look outward at the world and say America is the country, the indispensable nation that makes this a safer world and in a safer world, American innovation, American hard work has always been the thing that has driven our country to greater things. I'm going to be the president who will do those big things. We're not going to be small. And I'll say this about Donald Trump. Anybody who's going to be spending the next year and a half of their life focusing on keeping themselves out of jail and courtrooms cannot lead this party or this country. Right, and Governor, it needs to be said plainly. Governor, thank you. Let me turn to Senator Scott. Senator Scott, you don't care for Chris Christie. Don't care. He was my governor in New Jersey, by the way. Don't care for him. Um, whatever he just said there, it's nonsense. It, it, it is what it is. He he said a few key key things. Uh, he talked about um, what is it, uh, Zelensky and what did he talk about? See, it's he's so and he. I can't even cover what he's talked about. We're moving on from him. But one thing I wanted to say uh, that I didn't say in reference to what Vivek talked about. He brought up that this should be moderated by people like Tucker Carlson. And um, I would have to say maybe Dan Bongino and uh, different conservatives, not Repu not Democrats like this guy Holtz and that girl um, also who was pushing Russia, 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 and, you know, fake news and all of that. 
And he, he made a very, very good point that the Democrats would not bring in Greg Gutfeld to moderate, but the Republicans will bring her in to moderate. Again, it's a, it's a bad look. And again, Ronna McDonald, that's, that's her whole setup. It's a bad look. And I heard in a, she, she said, I think it was backstage from this, that Vivek is not going to get any money from the Republican Party. Friend, I don't know if you've heard, but he don't need your money. And again, Chris Christie ain't got nothing for me. You've said former President Trump can't win. Make your case to Republican voters. Well, certainly. None of, what I would say without any question is that the truth of my life destroys the lies of the radical left. We need a president and a candidate who will actually help our base solidify and attract independent voters into our party. The Great Opportunity Party is now winning back African-American voters and Hispanic voters because we are working on a foundation based on faith. Our nation is facing some deep challenges. It is the loss of faith in this nation that is a part of the erosion that we're seeing every single day. It's restoring faith, restoring our Christian values that will help this nation once again become the city on the hill. When Ronald Reagan talked about the city on the hill, he was coming from Matthew 5. When President Lincoln talked about a house divided, that was Mark. Our founding documents speak to the importance of a faith foundation. You don't have to be a Christian for America to work for you, but America does not work without a faith-filled Judeo-Christian foundation. I would be the president that helps us restore faith in God, faith in each other, and faith in our future. Without that focus, none of the issues, the policies matter. We have to get back to being a nation that is in fact the city on the hill that believes in each other enough for us to fight Scott, for that future. You. Senator Scott, thank you. We're gonna turn now to the chat. So Tim Scott, again, another one who never should have run. Now, I love what he just said. I love what he just said, trying to implement God back into it, and he's right. These are the things that we need to do. We need to, 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 to become more connected to God as a people, as a country, as a party. We need to put God first in all of these things. He's absolutely right. Um, we have lost so much. We have, we've lost so much. The debates, the, the problems, people are disconnected. They're, they're disconnected from themselves. They're disconnected from their families. They're disconnected from the country. They're disconnected from God. And so therefore the devil, the demons, they are able to work and divide and conquer. So Tim Scott is right getting back to to our Christian Judeo values, which this country was founded on, is key. He's absolutely right. We need the Holy Spirit to come upon us. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit so we can navigate through these things, these um, drug issues, abortion issues, um, everything else, these wars. We, we're in two wars, headed to three wars. It's unheard of we're we're headed to world war three again we need god and tim scott is right but he ain't the guy he ain't the guy who who's gonna get us across the finish line he's just not the guy he's pull, his his numbers are low he's got no energy he's not really connecting to the people he needs the holy spirit to get this done. He does. And I don't know if he can rally up that and, and get us to the finish line. So, you know, I love what he just said, but Tim Scott is just not going to be the guy right now. Maybe he can try again in 2024. Maybe by then it'll be, cause he's young, he's young. Maybe by then he would have sharpened up his, his tools. And when he goes against, I, I, I'm, I'm going to call it right now, the three that's all we already know that's going to be up there. DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy and perhaps Tim Scott in um, 2028 is what I'm trying to say. So this isn't in his turn. 
Thank you, Tim Scott. We appreciate your work. We appreciate all the work that you've done uh, for blacks and, 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 you know, the incarcerated and, and all of that opportunity zones. You've done some great work, but friend, this is really not your turn. And I'm sorry to say, but God bless you and may God keep you.